What's coming up is free. There's a whole world of even better stuff for our Patreon supporters. Go to patreon.com slash word in your ear to see how you can join them. Word down your way. Those who are about to tour salute you. Well, welcome to another Word Down Your Way. People about to go on tour talking about memories of shows they've seen and played. And Ron Sexsmith has some dates in in, uh, in London and in Ireland uh, in April and May. Ron, lovely to see you again. How are you? Good, yeah. Thanks for having me back. Uh, you guys, are, you're in the same lo- locale, right? I see you with all oh, the... Oh, yes. <laughs> we are. And you're, um, you're presumably... Last time we talked to you two years ago, you were in Ontario. And you were in a snowstorm. You were snowed in. I remember yeah, vividly. I, I, moved, I moved rooms. I was in that room last time with my piano. But anyway, yeah, it's nice to see you guys again. And, Very uh, good to see you. Well, look, you're going on tour. And we, we traditionally start these things by, by asking people about the first gigs they ever saw. Can you remember the first show you ever saw? Oh, yeah. I was Elton John in um, 1976 in Rich Stadium in Buffalo. I mean, I lived really close to Buffalo. I'm on the border, you know? And yeah. So, so most of the concerts I saw, like the Stones and the Who, were always at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. So but anyway, I went to see Elton John, 70,000 people or whatever it was. It was crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and Very intimate experience. Well, it was funny because it was general admission, and my friend and I, we were both like 11 or something, and we were trying to get close to the stage, and we got really near the stage, and then some big guy turned around and said, where do you think you're going? And we got really scared, and we ran all the way to the very back of the stadium, like, <laughs> like Rose Z or something. So Elton John looked like, you know, it looked like an M&M or something from where we were, you know. So, but, and they didn't have the screens and all that on the side, like, which I think is actually better. I don't like yeah. you're paying all this money and you're looking at a big screen all the, all the time. But anyway, that was my first show and I was a huge, El- I was a member of his fan club. So uh, it was very exciting. And my parents had to wait in Buffalo all day for the concert to be over to take, take us home. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they did all day, but anyway, it was, uh, that's great. Uh, that's a great mom. What know. was did the fan club would... send you things in the post? Did you? Oh, yeah. This, yeah. Every month I would get, um, you know, it was like an eight by 10 with his signature on it. And there would be a, a newsletter and saying, uh, you know, whatever, what, what he was up to or his likes and dislikes and this and that. And, and, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, and I, I never really, stop being a fan and you know and now you know and then i've got to know him a little bit we email from time to time you know sometimes i'll be like i'll be listening to one of his records and i'll be like oh i wonder what the deal on this song and i'll send an email and he usually gets right back or, or oh really what do you, you ask about how it was recorded or something like that well or? i remember i was listening to blue moves one time and i was like yeah what do you i haven't heard this record a lot what do you think what do you make of this album and apparently he said it was said it was one of his favorite albums that, that he that he'd made and and he said he was just listening to a song called where's the shoe Ra or something the, the night the night before or something and uh no but he's just been very generous and and actually recently he invited this whole school classroom to his concert in England. Um, and I, cause I had alerted him to this video of this classroom singing, I still, I'm still standing. And it, during the coat, during the pandemic, they were all on screens and he was really moved by it. And, yep. and so anyway, um, all I did was send him a link to this video I saw and he went and, you know, invited the whole class to his recent show there, wherever it was. And, um, Fantastic. Anyway, but he's he's just always been, you know, and it's just surreal for me for, you know, because I was such a fan to be on the other end of it in a way where he's been very kind of supportive of what I've been trying to do, you know. So that's the first show you saw. What was the first time you got up and played in front of people? It would have been at, well, I used to sing, um, this probably doesn't count, but I used to sing for my relatives when I was a kid. Um, you know, hey, everybody, Ronnie's going to sing, or, you know, and I would sing something like, uh, you know, Ben by Michael Jackson, or I would sing, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I used to do, uh, my grandparents loved Don Ho, and I used to do Tiny Bubbles, you know, that song. Um, it was like a, I don't know. It, big hit in America, anyway. Maybe it wasn't anyway. No, I don't know that one. 
Um, but uh, but then uh, in in high school, I think my, it was my last year. They had a variety show, and um, and I was and I kind of closed the show. I did a uh, your song actually by Elton John, and I had a friend of mine who actually could. Pl- I was just learning learning the guitar, but I had a friend of mine play it on piano, and so I just I stood and, and sang it with my guitar. And the next day, I had so many notes in my lockers from girls and and stuff that had never happened before. And I was kind of like, whoa. It, it that, a yeah, little, a light bulb goes on. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 they always and say that the most powerful aphrodisiac is <laughs> simply hanging a guitar around your neck. That's right. Oh, it, was, it was kind of unbelievable. And then, uh, and then when I got out of high school that same year, I was just 17, and my brother got me a gig, a, a professional gig at the Lions Tavern in my hometown. Um, and I wasn't even old enough to be in a bar, so I had to get special permission from the government and a letter and all that. And so I was playing December of, of that year, which would have been 81. I was playing my first professional gig and I played the Lions. I was kind of like, a, I, I became like sort of a local sensation where I was packing them in, but just doing cover songs, you know. Right. And um, But I did that for about six years. What sort of things were you playing? What sort of songs? Well, you know, when I started, my brother Don, my he was already playing there in a band. And he said, you know, you're going to have to, if you play here, you know, you're going to have to learn uh, Neil Young and CCR and the Beatles and all this stuff. So uh, I borrowed, uh, you know, took albums out from the library and I borrowed some of his records. And so, so yeah, I was just doing all the, the songs they're probably still playing in bars, Neil Diamond, you know, and I, and, uh, and I would do a lot of songs, too, that I liked that nobody else knew. I used to do, um, like, Eight Man by the Kinks, you know, or, or yeah, I would yeah. do It's Not True by the Who. And, um, and so I almost had my own little hits in this bar. And, and, and I was so young and had so much uh, enthusiasm. I wasn't, I didn't, I sang terribly back then. I, I didn't know how to sing properly, so I was always blowing my vo- voice out. And I had a very raspy, uh, kind of almost like the cookie monster kind of voice you know <laughs> and um but but i was just you know and i would do four sets a night like it was crazy and it but it really? was for me a, a really good education i gotta to, say that grounding must the you know you must tap into that grounding still nowadays do you i mean yeah but- you know, because I was playing for both, you know, basically I'm playing for drunks, right? And they were, uh, it was kind of a, a rough bar, and they, but they'd be all take very protective of me, you know. And if the cops came in, they'd hide and hide me, even though I had permission, you know. But I mean, I mean, if they, if they gave me a drink and I was, and the cops came in, they would sort of, you know, and, and, um, but, uh, but yeah, but you know, you would get this, I would get this, uh, sense if I was playing and I was losing the crowd, I would shift, you know, I would learn to shift the song or, um, there's certain songs they wanted me to play about three or four times a night, which was sort of annoying. And, um, <laughs> you know, but then basically I just sort when I started to write songs, uh, after my son was born, um, you know, nobody wanted to hear those, you know, and I started to kind of wear out my welcome there towards the end because I, I had a bad attitude. I didn't want to play this song anymore or that song anymore. And, um, and, it, and then I moved to Toronto, which, where it was the opposite. You know, if you played live, they wanted you to hear, they wanted to hear originals. Mm-hmm. But, but in my hometown, and it's probably still this way, you just play, you know. You play the hits. Yeah. The hits. yeah. yeah. So, well, so who when you watched on stage and, and, and felt influenced by and felt you've, you've borrowed aspects of the way they perform? Sorry, of, of, of the way who performed? Sorry? No, it's one of those anyone you'd seen on stage that influenced the way you perform, that you learned anything about, you know, stagecraft or whatever. Oh, I see. Well, you know, um, I knew early on uh, when I started to write songs that, because um, I had rock bands when I was a teenager, we jumped around yeah. and everything, and I just wasn't good at that, you know? And I, and I started getting into people like Gordon Lightfoot and going to see him play and Leonard Cohen and that. And I just like how they just stood there, you know, they say yeah, yeah, yeah. they, they made the kind of music that wasn't about jumping up and down. And, and that's fine. I love Mick Jagger and all that, but I just, I just wanted to try to make music that I could, you know, even Dylan just stands there, you know I mean? It's yeah. just, you know, it's all about the songs and the people I think that come see me, I don't think I'm a great performer or anything. You know, I love 
people who are, I love Freddie Mercury and all those, like that, at Bowie, it was incredible, Peter Gabriel, but that's not, I can't do that. So, yeah. Uh, so for me, there's, you know, there's this, you have those, those people who are very visual artists and you have the people, you know, like Johnny Cash or whatever, who just stood and sang, and that was good enough for the people who were into them. And um, so, but it was those people, and I was only 21, and at the, when I started writing songs, but I already I, I already knew I, I felt kind of like an old soul, and that and that it sort of pointed me in the direction, you know, of what kind of songwriter I wanted to be. And it, it, initially, it was hard because when I got into Lightfoot, I thought, is it okay for me to still like Harry Nilsson and the Kinks? You know, there was this sort of inner turmoil because I it's it, I felt like Leonard and Gore were doing kind of serious music and all this other stuff that I loved as a teen even Elton John I thought maybe this stuff is frivolous compared to uh, I mean it didn't take me long to realize that it's all great it's all brilliant and and uh, Queen is brilliant and you know everyone uh I love I have a lot of guilt. I love ABBA you know I don't have all that stuff so so I just became I just realized well uh yeah it's all great, and I just have to try to find my voice, and you know, and be uh, you know true to myself. Whatever. So, so w when you're you're touring uh, this year and you're coming to the UK, do you do you play any covers, or is it entirely your own material? Well, the, with the the more albums I do, it gets harder to squeeze in a cover because I have, uh, you know, I'm trying to do songs for in my new album. You know, uh, and I, and as well, I'm, you know, there's certain songs I'm expected to play, and then there's a, a, then the rest is just stuff I try to like. I try to do songs maybe that I didn't get to on my last tour, um, but even so, um, I, I usually try to do at least one cover. So, you know, maybe and oftentimes it's in the uh, encore if there is one. Um, you know, but. Or, you know, I was thinking I love Christine McVie and I thought maybe I'd do one of hers or something, for example. Right. But, but yeah, you know, uh, I, I generally leave my covers to my YouTube channel, Ron Boy, where I've done over a thousand covers. You know, right. I don't know if you know about this channel, but it's, uh, and I just do them in my kitchen and my bathrobe and whatever, but it's my own little personal tribute to all the, the songs that I love. And, um, you know, but, but yeah, sometimes, because he also, I don't want to play, uh, you know, three hour shows. Or, I try to, I don't like to play more than, you know, 90 minutes or 80 minutes. And so anyway, and at the moment I've been looking at the set list I'm working on and there's like almost 30 songs, you know, right. and it, thankfully, I mean, all my songs are quite short, but still it's, uh, anyway, I'm just trying to. You know, I try to do at least one from each record, and I try to make sure that, uh, you know, hopefully everyone, uh, you know, got their money's worth. Right. So uh, what kind of preparation do you do prior to touring? Do you do you go in a re rehearsal room and, and play? If I have, when I have a band, I do, yeah. With the band, we'll rehearse, uh, we'll have a rehearsal space, and we'll not, you know, and we'll rehearse maybe one day or two days, and then, then we go. <laughs> but... You know, since I've just been touring solo lately, I just, I just have a room over there with my piano in it, and I just kind of set it up like, uh, uh, you know, a show. And I'll just, and I'll run through the show. And then, because some of the venues, or most of the venues, I think, will have pianos. So I can put my guitar and go over to the piano, play a few. And then, um, so it gives me, it's just, uh, for me, it's good to practice every day, just so that when it comes time to, to do the show, I don't have to think about it very much, right. um, but every day I'm, I'm playing songs and then another song will occur to me that I should do. So then I have to cross this other, you know, find one to cross out or get rid of, you know, put this one in and that. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, a puzzle, you know, it's a bit of a um, dilemma, but I think it's a fun, sort of a fun challenge, I think. And you're doing four shows in in Ireland and one in in uh, the uh, the Union Chapel in, in Islington. So why four shows in Ireland? But Limerick, well, I think, and Galway and Dublin. Oh, I think I'm doing more like nine shows in Ireland. Oh, nine. All right. Yeah, I mean we're doing like uh, yeah, Cork, Galway, uh, Dundalk, Limerick, um, Belfast. I mean, there's a whole slew of them, 
I think we're playing Kill Kenny or something. Anyway, um, and it's weird. I mean, I've always done relatively well in Ireland and, you know, and the UK. I mean, I do better over there than I do here, you know. So, um, and the last few years, I've only ever done one show in Ireland when in the past, in the 90s, I would do these top to bottom kind of tours. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and, and some of those are just little pubs. And, and then I'm playing the Olympia Theatre in Dublin, which is uh, one of my favorite venues over there. Um, and then I think <clears throat> there's about six UK shows, if I'm not mistaken. So it's just a, it's just a little, quick little uh, tour around there. And um, I, I was a little worried about coming back so soon because I, I was just there last March. But, um, but anyway, you know, with the new album out, it's, it seems kind of like the thing to do. So, so you're looking forward to it? Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's this stuff now, this period of me now that it's, I find stressful. When my wife is my road manager and she's booking everything, hotels and flights. And I have, uh, before I come over there, I have this huge tour of the U.S. And where you have to drive everywhere. There's, you know, I haven't played there since 2015. So I'm a bit nervous about that tour. Um, and then I'm just thinking about how tired I'm going to be at the end of it. Cause it's about, oh, about 50 shows in all by the time I get home. So hopefully my health will be good and my voice will, will be, you know, will hang in there. And, uh, uh, yeah, but I'm looking forward to it. But at the, uh, I think once I'm there, once I'm backstage in the zone, so to speak, you know, then I'll be, uh, you know, then it's a great feeling, but and now it's just all this worrying and anticipation. Yeah, <laughs> sure. That's right. <laughs> so what's the best, uh, the way we f- usually finish these things is, what's the best live show you've ever seen? The best live show I've ever seen? Mm, yeah. Mm. You know, i got to say it was Cat Stevens a few years ago. Mm. He played uh, Toronto. You know, and I, I've sort of got to know him a little bit too because he was working at a studio in London where I was making a record. And I remember I came home from tour and I, and the night I, I came home or the day I came home, I, I noticed that Yusuf was playing Massey Hall. And so I sent him a message thinking uh, he's, there's no way he's going to get this message or anything. And then about an hour later, he, he wrote and invited my wife and I to the show. And it was really high security and everything. And it was sold out in about five minutes, the show. And um, and he hadn't played Toronto since I think seventy five, and this is my God, amazing. So the people were super excited. But when I got to the theater, he'd given us front row seats, like center front row, <laughs> sitting with his with his wife, you know. And and the before the show even started, it was exciting because the stage was set up like a train station. There was like a train platform with a, a clock tower. And the drum, the drums had a picket fence around it with a tree behind it. And I mean, it just, like, I was like, what is, this is amazing. And then when the show started, he walked through the train station to the front of the stage with his guitar um, and played three by himself. The first song he played was um, The Wind. Then he did Here Comes My Baby. And then he, then he did First Cut is the Deepest. That's like the first three oh, songs. Yeah, wow. Well. And and I don't know, it was just, uh, I've always loved his music and he looked great and he sounded exactly the same. People were just freaking out, you know. So, How did you feel about him in the middle of the front row? That's a kind of odd thing, isn't it? When the performer can see you <laughs> and knows that you're there. Well, it was nice to, every, every, like when he first started playing, at one point I got a nod from him, you know, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and then he came back to Toronto a few years after and he also brought us back, my wife and I backstage and, um, but that was the only, the other, for me, the other best show, I, I was a big Who fan and I saw the Who at the c and um, it was not their first time around after Keith Moon died, but their second time around and they played this show that in Toronto, people are still talking about it. It was like, like life changing, you know, and even without Moon, it was like in- incredible. Like, and and that as a fan of, uh, you know, I love the Kinks and the Who and all that stuff. It was just, uh, it was it was the kind of stuff that of you know heroes, you know, like I just and my my, my whole crew of friends were just on cloud nine for the year after that show. And I and I, I later on I heard that Townsend was just absolutely 
wasted that show but you wouldn't have known it but like someone that was backstage said he was stumbling around drunk right before the show but he was incredible i don't know he just was on fire that night so those yeah. two shows are fantastic yeah. that's very good well, beautifully described that's brilliant very yeah. good well look is that you know the traditional sign off uh you know is good luck with the tour <laughs>